Hey guys, Plasma1945, and no, I'm not pod racing across Groom Lake here in Area 51. My F-15 Eagle had failed to get up in the air because of a very simple condition that many folks may have noticed but may not know what's going on. But I'm going to go over to the hydrodynamic wingman here, Spitfire. Hello, pilot Spitfire jumping in here for a moment while Plasma works on getting it up. Now, jokes aside, I'm sure that getting it up in the air can be a challenge for anyone especially with the stress of a combat mission on your mind. As you can see, Plasma was struggling too, but based on my experience about thermodynamics, it's definitely not him. Want a hint as to why he was struggling? Here's a visual aid that I'm sure we can all appreciate. Other than the eye candy, can you see the difference between these two videos? No, it's not men versus women or what they're doing, rather, it's all about the temperature. In one case, the weather is hot. In the other, it's cold. And just like in the bedroom, temperature can affect your plane's performance. Now I'm going to turn the mic back to Plasma so he can nerd out on the technical stuff. And I'll be back with some final thoughts on what to do if it gets too hot for your jets. Oh yes, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for that Spitfire, I appreciate your confidence and it's not me, it's the temperature, which you can see from the briefing screen every time you load up into the mission. Now to make sure that you don't end up belly flopping and rolling across the ground, check that temperature before takeoff, it is standard operating procedure for all of Red Star team members for all missions and multiplayer servers, because different servers can set different temperatures, very crucial. Now in the video on the bottom, we have an F-16 on the runway at Area 51. All the inputs are identical. The top video is the replay of the same takeoff, except all I did is change the temperature. So there's no changes in how the aircraft's laid out or any of the controls. This is exact repeat, but as you can see on the bottom, there's enough speed and lift to get the airplane off the ground. In the top video, that F-16 is bouncing on the ground. If I hadn't left the gear down, he probably would have belly flopped and detonated. But with the gear down, after rolling for a bit, even the bottom F-16 can get up in the air. But as you can see, it needs a lot more runway. So let's jump in the cockpit and we've got side-by-side -side tape of the HUD and we can actually watch that effect. It's not much. We are talking three, four, five knots in a difference of 30 Celsius. But that can still be a difference between being able to take off and crashing out. Similar things will happen if you are dealing with a higher altitude takeoff. There may be different air pressure, but we'll do that in a separate video. For now, the key thing to keep in mind is get into your mission, get into your server, read what the air temperature is. If it's hot, you'll know to give it more thrust, more flaps, or have a bigger runway. Now, what happens when we have even more temperature. So here I've gone all the way to 50 degrees, real hot. It's a very hot day in Nevada. Well, in this case, we need to light up our afterburners. So F-15 takeoff again, except now full afterburner as we go for takeoff. Now, as a recommendation from real pilot, I was told always use afterburner on takeoff. So there you have it, pilots. Simply put, the hotter it is, the more thrust you need to get it up in the air and stay there. Not unlike some other sports I can think of. For now, remember, if it's hot and you are taking off, fire up that afterburner. If it's hot and you are in a dogfight, be ready for your plane to be a little sluggish too. All right, pilots, that's me done. Go kick some tires and light some fires. Spitfire out. Thanks Spitfire and guys drop a comment below if you want another visit from Commander Spitfire in our next video. Plasma1945 out. Wait, you're still here and watching? Okay, well in that case, here is Plasma's takeoff from Batumi and an F5. And just like with the F15 and the F16, I did a number of takeoffs with an adjusted temperature all the same parameters with a re replay track feature and at zero celsius i was able to get to about 132 knots after rolling for about 15 seconds at plus 10 that dropped down to about 127 knots 
And at plus 20, I didn't even get to 125 knots after rolling on the ground for 15 seconds or so. So keep all of this in mind, back up your plane if you need more runway space and get more speed by going to afterburner. As I mentioned before, the general recommendation that I've got is takeoff is one of the most dangerous parts of a flight. In Growling Sidewinder, you might get a chance to take off once or twice or three times or ten times, but if you're flying a real mission or a competition, you take off and you crash, you're going to be restarting that mission and not anytime soon because in most places the rules are one takeoff, one life, you mess it up on takeoff, you're not doing the rest of the mission. So for all those reasons, it's important to keep an eye on your temperature and make sure that you know what you're doing before you even start rolling. All right, guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. And also bring up your gear because that slows you down quite a bit, too. But not until you are safely off the ground and you've got enough speed. On that note, Plasma1945 is out. And again, if you did like this video and uh, you want uh, more vids from Commander Spitfire and you like this back and forth kind of thing, let me know and I will call her back in over the radio.